The best upgrade for mid-tier GPUs has just been announced. Twitter announces that it's done making any sort of sense, and AMD is fighting to replace NVIDIA in the best way possible. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast, not breakfast. This Monday, July 3rd, 2023, we are in the second half of the year, my friend. When I when that like clicked yesterday, it was the weirdest feeling. You're here for a new month. Woo! Congrats, you're still in the States. I'm proud of me. When do we kick you out? Uh, yesterday. Okay, that's, let's not make those jokes. Probably not. But what is not a joke is the fact that Asus is showing off some neat implementation of what they could potentially do with mid-tier GPUs, because one of the issues that we've been seeing crop up with things like the 4060 or even the 7600 is that they only have eight PCI Express lanes. But when you look at these bad boys, you see they are on a full 16 lanes, at least based on the physical insertion. So Asus said, hey, what if we, don't waste the fact that we physically have to use the slots and actually just have M.2 SSDs attached to the GPU. Excuse me? So this is not necessarily going to be coming out to market anytime soon, at least according to what they said, but they did show off a 4060 Ti Dual, which had an M.2 slot with a 980 Pro 2 terabyte SSD slotted in. I'm not gonna lie, this is the coolest thing. It makes so much sense. You stop wasting PCI Express bandwidth, you could potentially have two of these slotted in there with each of them using four lanes. And what they did show is you get full speed, seven gigabytes per second read, five gigabytes per second write. That's actually really good. That's wild. So there are a few tweaks that they have to make in order to get this to production. Like how are you gonna cool these bad boys, making sure that the GPU with the fact that there's now SSDs on the back stays properly cooled. Additionally, how do you do that for the SSDs as well? And then you would think that this is only a mid-tier feature when it's super usable because like, High-end graphics cards will continue to use 16 lanes, so they wouldn't dedicate that, but I feel like you would want it. The 4090 has enough space, but then you can't use the lanes. It creates a weird problem. I really like this idea. It'd be neat to see this. This is not the first GPU to have built-in storage though. The Radeon Pro SSG a few years back was the world's first GPU with two terabytes of storage because it had 16 gigabytes of HVM and then an SSD baked in, but now it's swappable. Like I, any consumer would want. Yeah. Let me know what you think of this. I, I want this now. I'm I'm actually genuinely so shocked by this. Asus, sell this and we'll buy please, it. Please, please. We, we promise. And I want you to buy today's video sponsor, Silverstone, and their Vista line of fans, because if you're looking for high performance fans that have all of the features of the more premium fans, but at a really affordable price, Silverstone's Vista lineup is going to be there for you. You can get them in black, black with ARGB, white with ARGB, 120 mil, 140 mil fans. They have exceptional performance for the money because the blade designs are modeled in tuned to similar standards as premium fans, including the fact that it has ultra wide PWM speed range going all the way down to zero RPM. And it has rubber damped corners to make sure that it's staying as quiet as possible, not vibrating the side of your case. If you're looking to upgrade your PC case with some new cooling, check out Silverstone's affordable line of Vista fans at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Silverstone for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. But while that's all affordable, it looks like Twitter uh, can't afford a whole lot right now. This weekend was a brutal time time for many social media platforms. You had Reddit with all of their third-party apps going dark because of the API access change that enacted at the end of Friday. And then on July 1st, so many things broke on Twitter. Number one, you cannot view tweets unless you are logged in. That was the first thing that set off this storm, which Twitter hasn't mentioned the full effects of what this is going to do, whether or not you'd be able to search tweets via Google or how you can access it via the API. But Elon Musk said that this is necessary because of data scrapers who are taking all of the information you find on Twitter, saying that it's to the point where it's affecting the real user experience, the, the data scraping, not the whole log in. But what ended up affecting the real user experience even more was what they allegedly did to combat the data scraping with them putting a rate limit on how many tweets you can view 
on Twitter. I could only scrape my own data at like 11 a.m. this morning. I'm so sorry. It was painful. So initially this rolled out with no explanation. People were just getting notices that they were rate limited on Twitter on July 1st. Then Elon Musk tweeted out that verified accounts can look at 6,000 posts a day, unverified accounts can look at 600, and new unverified accounts can look at 300 a day, allegedly to address extreme levels of data scraping and system manipulation which hasn't been a problem before. Why did it start on July 1st? We're gonna answer that in a second. However, these numbers did get increased from 600 to 800, and then finally to 1,000, which a lot of people were like, looking at 600 tweets. I don't think you understand just how many things you can consume on Twitter in that quick of a time frame. Even just clicking in on a single tweet and reading the responses can take up dozens of your views. You could spend literally five minutes to look at 600 posts. It's not a lot of time. Did you see people were actually speed running it? Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy. So. A lot of people think that this might be potentially Elon Musk's way to push people to paying for Twitter Blue. You could look at their competitors like Blue Sky, which Jack Dorsey started. Uh, when this all happened, he responded with Go Touch Grass, which would be fair if, you know, the viewership limit was anything reasonable. Yeah. If it was anything where it was like, hey, you've been scrolling for 30 minutes, maybe go outside. But no, this is less than 10 minutes of being on Twitter and you're done. Yeah, that's it's awful. But with that, Blue Sky actually had to temporarily suspend how many people could sign up for it because so many people were jumping ship after this all happened. So conspiracy theory number one, Elon trying to get people to pay for Twitter Blue. But you will notice that even Twitter Blue subs were rate limited as well. And part of that might be because Twitter refused to update their contract with Google Cloud, which is who's hosting all of their stuff. This got reported about a month ago, and that bill came due on July 1st. Why is Elon all of a sudden so worried about data scraping on a day that is seemingly random? Well, probably because they refused to pay Google what was allegedly a billion dollar contract, and they are trying to migrate everything in-house, so their servers can't actually handle the capacity of people People browsing even if you do give them eight dollars a month so they have to limit everybody fun wild this is totally fine this is fine it's that it's literally that if scenario. you're upset about this go touch grass and also some people are going ham on the rog ally i'm actually surprised that i didn't get around to this first probably because i'm busy with a million other things. I have to go back to the hospital this week with my son. I had to go to the hospital for two days last week. It's, I'll eventually get to use my ROG ally at some point, but modders over on Reddit got to install full length SSDs into the ROG ally, getting it up to four terabytes of storage because you remove the stiffening ribs that go under the heatsink, so that way you can slide the SSD under and then it fits. Yeah, you, have to, you have to like Dremel plastic and like make sure that's taken out, but you can do it and then close it up and allegedly, according to the sources, this does not affect thermals. It just, you're removing the stiffening ribs, which, I mean, you yeah. don't need your ribs. Just put SSDs inside of me. More storage. We're putting SSDs everywhere in today's episode of Hot News, and I hope you can put some storage in their hands. Do you have a storage deal today, Reese? <laughs> you do! <laughs> I was waiting for that to refresh. And said storage deal is the crucial P5 Plus. This NVMe N.2 SSD is currently going for only $49.99, making it $35 off for a one terabyte version. Not bad. Yeah, I just, I feel like I have to say, hey friends, welcome back to UFD deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. That's what he said. Well, you enjoy your Reese fist. No, I don't like that one. But what I do like is fractal cases. And today we have a double special with the Fractal Design Focus 2 RGB mid tower PC case going for only $39.99, making it $40 off. But then on the flip side, we have another fractal case with the Fractal Design Torrent. This black mid tower case is going for only $109.99, making it $80 off. For one of the best mid tower cases mm -hmm. out there, especially if you need cooling. It is currently back ordered, but for that price, Wait. Why is it a fractal sale day? Because there's two of them. I don't know. We built with the Fractal Terra on Friday, and I absolutely love that case. In case you missed that live stream, you can check it out right up there. But we may or may not be giving that away at some point. We'll Maybe. Talk about that at a later date. You know, 
We don't have to physically swap chairs, but I do feel like you do have to be in the driver's seat in order it, it to get it. It feels good. It okay. feels good. Well, while those were good deals, it appears that Apple is too good of a deal, so much so that Goldman Sachs, the bank that finances the Apple card, is looking to get out of the deal altogether because it's costing them over a billion dollars on top of other complaints that they've had, including the fact that Goldman Sachs wasn't ready for the rapid growth that came when the Apple card launched and that it received more disputes than it counted on from the Apple Card customers, and it just can't keep up with everything that Apple's trying to do. I mean, it lost over a billion dollars trying to service them, and I, I don't know if you know this, banks don't exist to lose money. They don't even exist to hold money. Have you heard that we make money through a system called fractional banking? Banks don't have to have the money on hand. They're not in the business of losing money. You just gotta say you got the money. But while Goldman Sachs is looking to pull out of Apple, it looks like, oh man, this is the worst news I could bring mm. to you today. So please just buckle your hearts, ready your seatbelts, and strap in for a weepy tale. The Lord of the Rings Gollum dev, Datalik Entertainment, is pulling out of game development after what admittedly was an underrated game. Underrated, yeah. Probably clearly. game of the year contender. Kind of sad that it's a difficult turning point and a new beginning in the long history of Datalik Entertainment where they're gonna focus on their publishing business rather than their development business. The worst part of this is actually that they're laying off a third of their staff, so 25 oh. people are actually losing their jobs. However, it's really just like, who thought that game number one needed to be made and then number two could be released in the state it was. I don't feel bad for the company, I feel bad for the people who lost their jobs because yeah. of decisions made by the head of the game dev. We didn't have hope for that game from the start, so... No, and people have less hope for Starfield than they used to, especially with the announcement last week that AMD and Bethesda were partnering up so that AMD was the exclusive sponsor of Starfield on PC. Now we have understanding as to why. The launch of AMD's new game bundle, including Starfield, this is going to apply to Ryzen 7000 CPUs. You'll be able to get Starfield included with these. However, it's not just limited to the higher end tier. If you go all the way down to the $220 Ryzen 5 7600, you'll still get it included, which actually seems like a pretty good deal. Also considering the fact that in order to switch to Ryzen 7000, you need to buy an expensive motherboard and a DDR5 RAM, getting probably what is one of the biggest PC games this year added in. This is one of the reasons why I think a lot of people will upgrade. So it kind of sweetens that pot to make it so that it's it's less expensive to do so. Yeah, because if you're, if you're prepping for the game, upgrading your system, free game. I am curious. What was the last game that you played on PC that made you go, I need to update my computer right now? That's a good question. Mine was The Witcher 3, because that was the last time that I wasn't given hardware for my job, and I actually had to pay for all of it out of pocket. Yeah, I got nothing. You're a Mac boy, it doesn't count. But what also doesn't count was anything AMD promised to deliver on in the first half of this year. You might remember in November when they launched the 7900 XT and XTX that they were gonna bring us FSR 3 and AMD HyperRX, with specifically the HyperRX having a deadline of the first half of 2023. Reese, as I mentioned uh, in the beginning of Hot yeah. News, we're in the second half of 2023, so AMD missing this deadline that they set themselves with no mention. They've been radio silent. Absolutely no talk on when they're gonna deliver on the features that they need in order to compete with NVIDIA on the software side of things. So HyperRX allows you to turn on Radeon Super Resolution, Radeon Boost, and Radeon Anti-Lag all at the same time, because currently you cannot do that. RSR does not work with Radeon Boost. It's supposed to give you faster frame rate while also lowering latency. Doing all of the things that NVIDIA is doing with NVIDIA Reflex and all of their DLSS stuff, it just, it needs to exist and they don't have it. And then FSR3, which is gonna be necessary to compete with the LSS3, doesn't exist, hasn't been mentioned, not even part of their game development for Starfield, which is not even coming out for another couple of months. So they're just not planning on having this ready. And any public communication that I've seen from AMD on this is more like, we're working on it. Kind of doesn't give me a lot of hope, to be fair. AMD is just really, really bad at communication. Their marketing, their product communication team, just not good. 
I'm going to say it. I, like, I, I don't know the people personally, but whoever's making these decisions are not doing the right thing to communicate with their customers. They're over-promising and under-delivering, which is the worst place to be in as a company, and you lose all of the goodwill that you've established. Yeah, communication's kind of been this their weakest point in the last two years. And it used to be that when I brought these topics up, kind of criticizing AMD for some of these bad moves, the vast majority of comments would be, Brett, you're too hard on them. And now I'm actually starting to see a shift where people are like, yeah, AMD's kind of really failing at this. So I'm not against AMD. I want them to succeed. I want good products from them. I want FSR 3. I don't want NVIDIA to be the only one in the market cornering these things. I want AMD and Intel to succeed. The way they're going to do that is with good products and good communication. Having one of those missing makes for a really rough ride for the consumer and I want to see it fixed. But one of the things we are seeing fixed that gets me excited about AMD is the fact that they are bringing Rockham to consumer GPUs. We've talked about this before, but Rockham is the way that AMD can use things like Nvidia's CUDA. Typically, this has only existed on Linux and has only existed on their data center, high-end, high compute cards, not on consumer stuff. But with the latest communication, they say, which again, as we found out, regardless of what AMD says is coming, doesn't necessarily mean it is. Our DNA 3 GPU support, including the 7900 XTX, should be able to get Rockham support. Okay. So this is a pretty big deal. They said that they've seen tremendous interest from developers to use Rockham on Radeon consumer cards. Having this established gives them a good foothold in getting people off of the stranglehold that is NVIDIA's CUDA on so many different workloads, so many different professional applications. I would love to see this, even if it is only on the highest end RDNA 3 card right now, it needs to exist. Additionally, one of the things AMD isn't saying anything about, which is fine if it's not ready, but we are seeing in development logs, they are working on Rockham for Windows. So having it on consumer cards and on Windows could be the thing that we need to unlock actual true shifts to being on Team Red. Because as much as we want to complain about NVIDIA being out of touch, them pricing things inappropriately, their launch is going very poorly with the 4060, 4060 Ti, all of that, they still have the dominant market share. It doesn't matter how much we complain, people still buy them because that's what they're familiar with and what actually works all of the time. I would love to be in a place where our default answer when people asking us about workstation cards isn't just NVIDIA. Yeah, if, if you need CUDA, hey, there's the, actually this option. Rockham is now supported on Windows, there you go. There was also Zluda talked about a while ago, which was Intel's answer to CUDA on their integrated GPUs at the time. I'm not sure of the development for getting it working on Arc, but we need more of this. I'm excited for AMD's future, I wish they would also be excited to communicate with the customer a proper timeline for our future. That'd be that'd be great. That'd be swell. I'd appreciate that, AMD. Great let stuff. me know if you could do that. And let me know what you think of Rockham coming to consumer cards. Let me know what you thought of anything from today's episode of Hot News. We won't be here for news tomorrow because it's a public holiday in the USA, but we'll be back on Wednesday for more of the hottest tech news, my friends.